Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. Today we're joined by Felicia Bender, the practical numerologist. Thank you so much for being here, Felicia. Ooh, I'm so excited. I'm thrilled actually to, to meet you. So looking forward to talking numbers with you and, and uh, your listeners. Awesome. So Felicia, let's get down to the basics a little bit. What exactly is numerology for the beginner's mind? Okay, perfect. Because um, numerology, just for those of you out there going, I don't even know why I'm listening because I hate math. <laughs> me, aka me. <laughs> a and a a aka me also. It's I, I was speaking with you prior and just saying it really is kind of a funny cosmic joke that I do numerology because honestly, um, math has always been my most tormenting subject in my life. So what I want to say, if you're out there and you're like, Ooh, this is math, it actually isn't math. It's very simple calculations. And yet the numerology is an art and science of numbers. It's kind of like a language. So uh, this comes the kind that I practice comes from Pythagoras. So if you didn't like math, Samantha, you were not paying attention to the Pythagorean theorem of geometry, right? Nope, I wasn't. I wasn't. I don't know anything about okay. that. <laughs> so those of you out there are like, yes, I was. And the, the others are like, no, I haven't. So anyway, same guy is what I'm trying to say. And he was a Greek uh, in, in about in the 500s, 530-ish uh, BC. And he basically posits this idea that numbers carry with them not only uh, the ability to count something, right? A quantitative value, like, you know, uh, or a qual yes, a quantitative value. It's the quantity of something like one apple, two apples, so on. But the numbers carry with them a vibration, a frequency. They carry data and code. And so it's interesting because he was, a, again, a mystic, a mathematician. He was also into astronomy, into music. So he was a very, uh, would have been a very interesting guy to, to have lunch with, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, uh, and yet, basically, it is an interpretive art and a science where we will take uh, a person's name, their full name, as it appears on the birth certificate, and the date of birth, and that with that, we can run all kinds of calculations. It's very, in some ways, if we want to compare it to something, it's like an as astrological chart. So um, the life path number in numerology is like knowing your sun sign in, a, in a, a astrology and very similar. And then if you want to get deeper into it, then you get into, you know, into the deeper elements of your chart. So basically, uh, numerology can give all of us an idea about uh, what our life's purpose is, <laughs> what we're doing here, how we're supposed to be doing it, give us really great ideas about cycles of time, what we're learning what we're growing into. And uh, so that is, is basically the foundation of Pythagorean numerology. Amazing, amazing. So do you feel like in that case, do people come in with a predetermined sort of life path number? Do you feel like we're like predestined to have these names, these life paths? Do you feel like it's all kind of worked out in the cosmos? I actually, I don't want to get too woo woo out of the <laughs> shoot because, <laughs> okay. because I am the practical numerologist. You are the practical, yes. And yet, honestly, I do believe that we come in with a particular soul's contract mm -hmm. and uh, that our numerology does reflect that. I feel like we do choose that. And we do. It was interesting. I even had this conversation a, a day or two ago with someone who said, well, you know, my son you know, he didn't choose his name, I chose his name. And we chose this odd spelling of it. And I said, yes. And yet, if you look, if you step back, and think about when you were pregnant, and you're like, Oh, if it's a boy, it might be this, this or this, or if it's a girl, it might be this, this or this. And then one day, you suddenly wake up and you go, Oh, this is it. This is this is him. It's this. And I said, So did you make that up? Or did he drop that in? <laughs> yes. somehow right, right i mean right. It, so it's a it's a little bit of an elevated uh thought about that and take it or leave it but in numerologically any numerologist uh that i know will say that yes we chose this pathway and we chose this we chose all of it so that we could learn these lessons and have these experiences in this lifetime 
Right. And so when you're looking at someone's chart, do you first go to the life path to really break down for them kind of their soul's purpose? Is that the main place you would go to unravel the soul purpose in this lifetime? Well, it, it's interesting because uh, very honestly and pragmatically, I can look at someone's birth date and I, in that case, I could figure out uh, very quickly their life path. And then I also know that their day of birth, their mm -hmm. birth day. Mm -hmm. So to me, that would offer me a, a bit of information. Uh, and then when we, when we get into the name, that gets a little bit more time consuming or a little more complex in terms of we, we, um, turn the letters into numbers, and then we add uh, different things in different ways for the rest of that. So the soul's purpose actually uh, is indicated in numerology by a number called the soul urge. Mm -hmm. And this is taken from your name, and it's taken from the vowels in your name. Mm -hmm. And uh, of all the numbers in numerology, it's a little bit more of, of a debate in terms of how it's calculated because it's a e i o u sometimes y mm. <laughs> depending on the school of thought and the placement and even with some uh uh schools of thought in numerology also the w so again it's a little more vacillating a little more volatile in terms of how you determine it but i'd like to also say up front that i truly believe in my own practice if anyone knows my work they know that i uh i like to present the different the different ways of thinking because there's no one absolute on anything right. and i'm always saying we all have to be responsible for doing our homework doing our research and figuring out what really resonates with us personally and we have to you know do it both ways or the three ways and then go, hmm, this one actually feels like it fits better, best for me, and then use it in that way. So yeah. Right. That's and so yeah, that yeah, it gets really complicated with the solar <laughs> calculations, I know. So when it comes to life path for listeners out there, can you actually talk about them calculating their life path number? Absolutely. And Samantha, do you mind if I use yours as an example? Um, I would love that. <laughs> okay, awesome. So uh, Samantha's birth date, we would use as an example. So she is born September 21st, uh, excuse me, 22nd, 1996. What I would say up front, uh, as a numerologist is I can see that she has a what is called a master number in numerology as her birth day, the day she was born is the 22nd. In numerology, there are numbers that have the repeating numbers, the 11, which is a double one, the 22 uh, is a double two, 33 is a double three, and so on. But the 11, 22, and 33 are the ones we use primarily when we're just when we're looking at someone's core numbers in their chart. And so the master number actually indicates higher spiritual potential, but some more challenges along the oh, way. Yeah. Let's just leave it at oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so we could talk a little more about that as mm -hmm. we go along, if we use you as an example yes. here. And yet, I just wanted to do, do that little disclaimer up front. So for those of you listening, if you're driving, if something else, please wait and don't do this now. Um, but you have to, you have to at least... I, I would encourage you to kind of like a carpenter, which the, the motto for the carpenter is measure twice, cut once. For, <laughs> nu for numerology, it's add at least twice, uh, if, not if not another time, just to make sure that your math is correct. Because when you're off one number, you're really off, okay? Yeah. Um, so what we're always doing in numerology is we are reducing to a one digit number. So I'll show you what I mean by that. Now let's look for the life path number. We simply do, uh, we take September and that is the ninth month of the year. So that is a number nine. Then we take the 22nd. That is, as we said, a master number. So that is not reduced in this example. Okay. So it's, it remains a 22. Then the hardest math of it all. Are you ready? Okay. Uh, ready. Is 1996. So we take one plus nine plus nine plus six. So that's 10, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Then we are continuing to reduce to that one digit number, correct? So we do two plus five, and that equals seven. So now we're going to uh, add all three of these numbers together. So nine plus 22 plus seven. 
So that is uh, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, Ooh. right? Ooh. Plus <laughs> seven. And uh, that is uh, 38, correct? Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. So now we take three plus eight, and that is 11. And then we know that that's a master number, though double one. So the 11 can be either, can, it can stay there as an 11. I, I actually like to talk about it as the 11 slash two, mm -hmm. because if you add one plus one, it equals two. So the 11 two gives you a really good idea of the, um, all the components that go in with that 11 too. So you've given us a little bit more of a complex example. <laughs> I did. I did. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, than we might otherwise have. Um, we could do, we can do another one really quickly just for simplicity. So if we do uh, someone's born on, let's say August 14th, 1963, August is eight, 14th is a five, 1963 reduces to a one, then we go eight plus five. And so that's, and that's what do your math eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then we add one, it's 14, one plus four equals five. So I'm just giving you one more example. And look at, all this, there. look at all this math go. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, I, I have gotten a little bit quicker with it. It's really strange. So in any event, so you you out if you're out there, calculate your life path number and uh, and see where it lands for you. And then we can talk about what each life path, you know, brings to the table. Yeah, I would love that. Okay, so yeah, let's, do um, let's do it. Let's, let's do, do it. it. And and these, I just have to say, first and foremost, there, you know, we could talk for a long time about each life path number. So we're going to be pretty succinct here um, so that everyone doesn't doze off in between. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but also, it's really fun to, while you're listening to the other ones, to kind of still listen and take it in because chances are you might have some of these other numbers in your chart and you might identify uh, yourself with that. You can also do, uh, you know, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your parents, your siblings, whatever in the meantime, and kind of even get a few ahas about them. So with that said, let's start with the number one and uh, the number one, because we're in numerology, we are talking always about the numbers one through nine. And then there are some combinations thereof, but one through nine is what we're really uh, focused on in numerology. And the one, if you think about it, is, is number one, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's yeah. all about number one. So I call the one as a life path, uh, the creative or the innovative leader. Mm -hmm. uh, the key words and key concepts here are uh are in all the I words, all about I, all about me. It's ind independence, individuality, action, origination. They're the pioneers. They're the, the quirky individualists. They're the, the ones who are the entrepreneurs and the, you know, the visionaries in that way. So think about it also, because sometimes if you're listening, you're like, Ooh, that's, that's my life path, but that's nothing like me. I, I'm all nervous about, right. okay. So every life path, when we, when we talk about it, I'll talk about the optimal and then always think about those key words and there will be opposition there. Mm. Okay. And it shows up either as uh, as overactive or underactive. So let's just use an example for the one. The one, you know, in their shining glory is that amazing uh, leadership person, the one who everyone respects and admires is, again, entrepreneurial spirit, uh, marching to a beat of their own drum sort of thing. So the opposing force is they can be really self-centered really myopic that way. Uh, they can not play well in the sandbox. They can kind of be those <laughs> yeah. bullies, the leaders yep. who just want to, you know, just do as I do. And I'm not really gonna, gonna pay attention to anybody else's wants and needs or, or place in this partnership that we have as a team, mm -hmm. or they can be the shy, 
acquiescing, never step up. And they're usually mm -hmm. cynical, pessimistic, victimized, often maybe a few alcohol issues, you know, mm -hmm. those sorts of things that can come into play. So think about that as we as we move into every number there, I'll give you the mostly the positives, and then a few of the choices of, of uh, some of the oppositional forces that come in. And just know that we all are, we all have our stuff that we're working on, you know, as we move through with our numerology. So not so, to interrupt, not to interrupt your no, flow here, but not so at basically all. numerology is looking at the highest potential points, but also where we can have our downfalls. So it's looking at the potential, but also we're not bypassing that there's also going to be that pendulum that can swing higher or lower as well. Oh, absolutely. And the okay. point of, and the point of it, because the life path is what you have chosen to learn. Mm. It's what you have chosen to grow into, to evolve toward, to master. And so that's why it takes a lifetime because there's going to be so many, so many levels of that. Right. And because we will have these innate drivers and gifts and talents and characteristics in these realms, and yet we'll also have some more significant challenges in these themes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the, the one life, the one life path, for instance, is always going to be working with extracting from dependencies and codependencies. And I, right. Yeah. I did a video, actually a TikTok once where I talked about Jim Morrison as an example of a life path one, because I was like, this is the epitome of the one. Yes. Yes. And Steve Jobs, a one. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've also got Tom Hanks. Mm -hmm. who, I mean, I don't know him, but he seems to be a pretty, <laughs> he seems to be a pretty, a pretty in alignment one, right? Um, so it's, everyone can have, can have their, their darker side, every yeah. number, right? Mm -hmm. uh, can, can have that. So mm -hmm. uh, never feel picked on when you're, <laughs> yeah. when we're talking about it. But right. yes, exactly. I would agree with you mm -hmm. totally. So then if we go, if we move into the two, the two, uh, and you can think about each number kind of bounces off of each other, right? Mm -hmm. Because the one is the more masculine, the more driven, the more ambition and all that. And the two is more feminine. Yes. The two is the diplomat, the, mm -hmm. the, the intuitive, the empath, the mediator, all about relationships. Ambition usually resides in their relationship dynamics. Mm -hmm. These people are super de duper de duper de sensitive. Yeah, so sensitive. <laughs> Twos are so those <laughs> very very right and yes, and yes. psychically, intuitively, emotionally, mm -hmm. and they're really really learning how uh, not to take things personally. Yes. And how to really create uh, their sense of themselves from the inside out, because these people are usually start out as the pleasers, mm -hmm. very insecure, mm -hmm. maybe a little shy, <laughs> having a hard time speaking up for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So that can, uh, that is a lifelong journey for the two. And uh, so again, what could possibly go wrong? Uh, they give, they give, they give, and then they withdraw with resentment because no one can read their mind the way they can read other people's minds. Let's just put it that way. Ooh, right? That's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you, you know, the two intuits everyone, you can walk into a room, uh, it, it, you have that barometer going on, and then you don't understand how people can't read you in the same mm -hmm. way. And the two is always really relying on outside acknowledgement, outside, you know, uh, um, d definitions of who they are and what their value is. And as soon as they let go of that, mm -hmm. the real, the real amazingness comes in for the two, mm -hmm. uh, because these are the most beautiful, powerful diplomatic presence uh, uh, in, in, in numerology. Uh, very loving, very caring. And they're the ones you want uh, behind the scenes, the power behind the throne, the ones that are organizing everything and caretaking for the whole group. They're always about the win-win. And I always say the two is learning how to uh, put themselves in other people's shoes without wearing those shoes home. 
(laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. Which is the empathic struggle for every empath out there. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. And so with that, we'll, we'll, we'll bridge that into that master 11 too. We won't, there's a lot to talk about with the master numbers. Maybe sometime we just go into the master numbers themselves. We devote something to that, but, but the, you know, the basics is are for the master numbers the two, you know, moves it can move into that 11 two, that master number that we spoke of that you that is your life path. Yep. So the, the 11 is the um, kind of the spiritual channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and yet in numerology, always referred to as the dreamer, rather than the doer, <laughs> right? Oh, <yeah>. So it's <laughs> like there, it's like the 11 two is like a walking satellite dish with all of this information and inner, you know, all this stuff coming in from the ethers. Mm -hmm. And it's the job of the 11 to to be able to focus and uh, come up with what their channel is, right? It's also like the balancing of the masculine feminine, right? It's like the 11 is having to work through not getting too into one side of the spectrum, bringing that into equilibrium as well. Absolutely. I say it is the ultimate PowerPoint of the yin yang. Mm. It, right the masculine and the feminine working together the issue with that is is most 11 twos don't get it you know the, with, unless <laughs> yeah. you're and what i mean by that yeah. i don't mean that in any no, to- I mean totally. that lovingly totally i get so many 11 twos when they're like oh my gosh when i finally read about the master number suddenly it all became yes. so much clearer yes. yes it's honestly like I think every master number needs to know about numerology that's my theory <laughs> I actually have to agree with you because <laughs> because the master numbers are innately in conflict with themselves and it's really great to understand that underlying pressure the underlying anxiety that kind of spiritual pathway that you're on and that it is it is a longer uh, pathway of getting there. And there will be intense challenges uh, that come in because you are meant to be a master and master this on uh, on all kinds of levels. And also to know that really it begins to ripen and enrich and, and blossom when you've been doing it, when you've been doing your work later in life. Absolutely. You know, yeah. So there is, there is that we could go on and on, but I think I that we'll, le- we'll, we'll, we'll leave, <laughs> we'll leave that one as it is. Yeah. We'll moment. leave it as it is. Yes. And, uh, but I, but just to, to just put a little lid on that, it is that the foundational energy for the 11 two is the two that diplomat and everything else. And then think about the one that we talked about double that. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's kind of where the arm okay. wrestle comes in. So the numbers are building off of each other almost. Correct. Okay. I love that because I've never heard that explanation of it. I love that. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is very, uh, I find that it's um, really valuable to look at that Mm -hmm. in that way. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll leave it at that. I was going to bring something else in, but I think it would be confusing. So I'm not going to. (laughs) So let's move to, let's go to the uh, three, the three life path. Uh, After that 11, two, the uh, three is the creative communicator. The three really is all about um, creative self-expression, emotional sensitivity, meant to be in the spotlight. These folks are uh, the number of creation and creativity. It's the trinity, right, in in numerology. And so it is creation. It's creative energy. And these people are force fields in that way. So uh, infinitely curious. I always say the the mantra for the three is when you're laughing, you're learning. Usually (laughs) very, very quick, very youthful, very incredibly creative so once again what could possibly go wrong uh they're incredibly um one of the biggest the the biggest nemesis for the three is incredible self-doubt and fear of criticism especially early on Uh, emotional volatility emotional highs and lows that can go in uh with that and blocked blocked expression Mm -hmm. sometimes so, and it's very interesting because threes are are often known as kind of the pleasant path, right? Because they're the number of joy and optimism. And yet, if you're a three out there, also understand, and I'll say this very succinctly, 
what you're meant to be doing, you, you experience a lot of emotional trauma as a three, and you're meant to use that in order to feel your feelings <laughs> and not just think about, and not just right. think about them. Not intellectualize then, them. Exactly. Right. And then use that as a source of your expression and creativity, because threes are meant to be, uh, again, uh, anything with the written and spoken word. They are the ones who are the writers, the actors, the musicians, the artists, the podcasters, the, you know, all of that sort of thing. Even someone like, you know, Frida Kahlo is uh, the, the mm -hmm. artist wa was a three, but I want to bring in that element because there can be a kind of melancholy because there's a lot of, because threes feel they feel, they are feelers and they're trying to kind of process that. But in that processing, they're supposed to be giving out um, works of art and connectivity emotionally that will inspire and motivate and uplift other people. All right. Yes. So have fun, you threes. <laughs> <laughs> Threes do have fun. They're fun at parties. I love to be around a three. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, oftentimes they can be, you know, yeah. It depends. Can, it, depends. It, it all depends. So the four, the four is, you know, we go from that more frolicky three to the more serious four. The four is that that all about security, their stability. They are the systems builders. They are teachers, they're knowledge seekers and purveyors. Uh, in numerology, are, they are foundations energy. These people are tried and true. They are honest. They are hardworking. They are the worker bees. They are the ones, if you want something done, you get a four on your team. Okay, seriously. Um, and and they are inside of the box kind of thinkers. They're like, it's yes or no, it's right or wrong. It's this or that. Not a lot of gray there. And they, they don't like chaos. They don't like anything. They like organization. They're really good with organization management. So once again, one of the caveats for them is it's the number of limitation. So there can be a lot of self limitations that come in with that. Um, and they can be really stubborn and uh, inflexible. So they're working on flexibility. So then if we have the 22 four, that's another master number, they are the master builders and the teacher of teachers. So double up that two, and then place it, uh, you know, on top of that hardworking, uh, diligent four. And that's kind of the energy that you have with that 22, with the 22 four most powerful uh, energy in numerology, and yet it's not for the faint of heart. <laughs> so, right, as right. you can attest to, it as it's your birthday Ooh, number. Yep. Yeah. We won't Does get that... into all that, but <laughs> yes. okay. But are you what? What will? What do you relate with with that? I mean, yeah. You know, I just feel like with the twenty-two, I feel very with the eleven and the twenty-two. I constantly feel like things have to be perfect, and like mm -hmm. we have to make everything be like just as perfect and seamless as we can go. The twenty-two, I feel like I am here to teach when I feel ready for that role. Mm -hmm. And there's always these feelings of teaching and wanting to sort of guide and sort of lead the pathways. But I think the perfectionistic sort of tendencies are always coming in. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so it's just it's a constant, you know, it is a constant practice sport, right? And I think the the key here is in, you know, intention, the, you know, intentionality that you have, and just having this information that offers you a way to frame that is a really great thing. So, yep. so all right, so then if we go from the 22, four, let's go to the five, the five is that, you know, we're, we're leaving that more serious, more cautious, uh, four, and we're going into the wild, the wild child, <laughs> the, <laughs> yes. the five, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. the five is the number of, I, I call the five as a life path, the sensuous freedom seeker, all about fun, fun fearlessness, adventure, it's all about the experience. It's all about uh, it's all about um, changing circumstances and versatility, and just really seeing the world as your oyster. These people can are great salespeople. Uh, they're often very uh, into metaphysics as well, because uh, one of the the levels of freedom is spiritual insight. Right, mm -hmm. gives you that level of freedom. I find that a lot of fives really gravitate toward metaphysics physics and that on that level. And so it is the number of excess. 
and it, and uh, the number of escape as well that goes with that. If there's ever a number in numerology that points to working with some addictions, which all numbers have, okay, but fives very much so. And what I want to say about that is that that's the point. The point of the five is to experience it. And the highest level is to been there, done that a little bit more quickly than not getting stuck there. Right. Mm. You know what I because love about that too, is like in numerology, it's allowing someone to not feel kind of like that guilt about their life path either, where it's like, oh, I'm here to just experience that. And that was a part of my experience. That exactly. was a part of my soul experience, right? It takes that sort of shame we can feel sometimes out of it as well. And that's what I, again, really stress in my work and in my work with, you know, with, with people and looking who like to, we all like to beat ourselves up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for things that we've done or haven't done. And what I would extend that into the five very briefly is that if you look at someone who is a five life path, I think Russell Brand, if you know Russell oh Brand, goodness, yes. <laughs> yes. Is, to me, he's the poster child, kind of the, the quintessential five, because I mean, if he even the way he speaks is yes. like no filter. Yes. Right? Fives. Mm -hmm. Honestly, many fives have have diagnosed ADHD, have oh, wow. other obsessive compulsive stuff, have food sensitivities, have other sensitivities that uh, go go with that. And so what I would just say very briefly is that he's the poster child. He was addicted to everything. Yeah. Right. Totally. And really went down that rabbit hole. And then he found his spiritual life. He got help. He got clean and sober. And he's now moving into a helping. And, and the, at the end of the day, the five is here to show others how to live their most fearless existence mm. without, you know, particularly just jabbering about it all the time, but, but showing, <laughs> right. I mean, just showing it. Right. And so the flip side for the five is excesses is addictions is a, a, a scatteredness, not being able to follow through or focus on things and, um, and some self-indulgence can be part of that as well. And because the five is here to work, uh, to be fearless there will be fear. There's going to be a lot of fear <laughs> for mm. you out there if you're a five. Um, some that you can explain and some that you can't, you know, um, that go with that. So that is the five in a nutshell. I love so, the five energy. <laughs> I great. do too. I have a lot of fives in my life. I have a lot oh, of five friends and family members, that sort of thing. Um, so the six, so what does the six bring? Now we've got that wild child. Now we've got the, the white picket fence. <laughs> so, so this, this is six, so, illum this is so illuminating for me because I never have perceived it in that way. It goes into the next sort of cycle of energy through the numbers. It's so interesting. Yeah. I love, I love how it's all, it all builds on, you know, builds on each other. Yeah. It's really cool to me. Awesome. Um, so yeah, now we've got now, now that we've, you know, bridged through that, we've got the six, the six in numerology, I call the six life path that nurturing visionary. Mm -hmm. The six is, uh, is traditionally known as the kind of uh, not kind of the home family, the domestic world, the domestic life. Uh, caretaking, kind of a little bit self-sacrificing, responsibility with the capital R, right? Mm -hmm. It's the cosmic parent, no matter. Mm -hmm. And if you're a six and if you, you're, you're like, I know sixes who've never gotten married, they don't have the traditional, you know, home and family, but you will, as a six, uh, take on that nurturing, responsible parenting role with family of origin, with friends, with colleagues, with that sort of thing. It is also, again, that visionary, very creative, very artistically inclined, often very musically, actually, in my opinion, and uh, very justice oriented yeah. and also very, very, very aesthetically, uh, it leans toward aesthetic pleasure. And what I mean by that, the six loves, uh, if you're a nurturing person, you want everything to feel good, right? You want to feel mm -hmm. everything to feel nesty and nurturing and supportive and all of that. So often sixes will find themselves in those industries uh, as well. So again, what is the challenge point here? It all sounds perfect. 
doesn't it? <laughs> Sounds amazing. <laughs> Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. I want to be a six. <laughs> uh, yeah. You, okay. Now, now you sixes over there, raise your hands when you, when you get the, the challenge points here, which is kind of crushing perfectionism because sixes are idealists, right? Bar is really high. And often it takes a while for sixes to really understand that they are the big picture people. They can see solutions where other people can't really even see problems. And that's a real point of frustration. Mm -hmm. And that that can come in, that can play out as criticism, as judgment, as uh, that sort of thing about other people, especially people, in, you know, who are close to you to as a six life path, you can have a, a really stringent sort of idea about how people should be. Um, and that really extends mostly to to the the to yourself as a six, if, if the six is like that. So control, perfectionism, and, uh, and judgment. So really learning uh, the value of acceptance, mm. right? Accepting the perfection of the imperfection of everything. And there's a lot of layers to that because they are the ultimate caretakers, but they can be uh, really, they can be enablers in that way as well. Mm. So um, they get to, they get to work with that in life. So then we have the 33, six, again, take that three, that creative communicator, double it up and plop it right on top of that six. <laughs> and it's, that's a, the 33, six is a high calling. It is uh, the teacher of unconditional love. It is a really interesting person who usually is very gifted artistically. And yet they're also a uh, there's also a lot going on there. If we look at some examples there, we've got Meryl Streep as a 33, oh, wow. uh, Robert De Niro, we have mm -hmm. Stephen King, uh, other people like that who, um, I love what Meryl Streep said, and I love Meryl Streep. She is like my mm -hmm. idol. Um, <laughs> and yet I, I read something the other day that I laughed because I know her numerology. <laughs> right. She said, she said, oh, you know, my kids, my kids say something about that. I, I give the most unsolicited advice <laughs> of anyone. And I was like, that is You're like, you like, know. A, <laughs> yeah. like a true six. So it's that sort of, that sort of thing. So uh, the heart is in the right place, but it's pretty, it's pretty much like I, I need to, you know, tell everyone what to do and how to do it. So a question um, that just came to me real quick mm -hmm. is when we have master numbers, are these more rare in the charts? So is it kind of like when you're doing calculations, is it more rare for you to see these 11, 22s and 33s? It is a bit more rare. Of course, okay. the interesting thing is as a numerologist, I find that a lot of people who decide to, you know, to do a numerology reading or something have found, find right. out that they have these numbers. <laughs> right, right, right. So in some ways I'm like, well, you know, I would have to do more of a, more of a, a, a yeah. blind study on that, mm -hmm. but, uh, because I get a lot of people with, with master numbers and also what's called in numerology, karmic debt numbers. So mm -hmm. there are other things that I love to work with people on that, because I think those, those of us who, uh, have those really, uh, need the support. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So if we then move to the number seven, the seven is the number of spirit basically, right? It's seventh heaven. If you think about mm -hmm. that sort of thing, and yet a very interesting number to me, because it is, it, it I call the seven, uh, the analyst, and the sometimes reluctant spiritual seeker, yes. because these are the people who everything is slow and gradual. I say that this as a life path mm -hmm. is of all the numbers, the most internal journey. Yeah. It is like it is a soul growth lifetime. Yeah. And yet someone will have the propensity as a seven to be an analyst, to be, uh, again, when they're in their game, they will, they will uh, begin to understand uh, that they like to have those higher questions in the spiritual, in the spiritual realms. Um, they're very, very analytical skeptical. I always say that the, the seven is like, all right, well, okay. If we're all having a spiritual experience in the human <laughs> body, prove it, prove it to me. Mm. Give me the book, show me the spreadsheet, whatever. They need a lot of proof. Right. And then they're learning how to work with that analytical brainy, you know, high level uh, intellect. 
And then also I say they're working on uh, understanding both the left side and the right side of the brain and developing both. And then at the end of the day, integrating both. It's kind of like that to me, um, Einstein was a six life path, but I will say it to me. He was seven, such a seven. He seems like such a seven. I need to look up his whole chart. I'm, yeah. I mean, there had to have been seven in there, yes, but what I'm, yes. but he, but, but also you sixes out there. There's a lot of creative, amazing and visionary energy there. So that can be used in any way. But my point being is that it's more like that, that development of that Einsteinian brain. Yes. Where it's almost you, like it's. Yeah, it's the scientific spiritual. They have to merge the scientific with the spiritual, right? And that beautiful exactly. balance comes in. Yeah, very exactly. philosophical, very philosophical as well. Very, very much and highly refined mind, but they're also on a different wavelength. They also are kind of, they are misread all the time because people think they're a little snooty or kind of stuck mm -hmm. up or disengaged. And they're trying to kind of understand emotions. Mm. They've got plenty of them, right. but it's like, they can't fit them in the spreadsheet. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, I'm serious. And it's, yeah, I, I remember having a seven client one time and she said, you know, ah, uh, she said emotions, they're just so useless. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that is so great oh for goodness. a seven. I mean, I couldn't yeah. have said it better. Um, so um, the power here is in their wisdom. Mm -hmm. They are incredible. Uh, they're just bringing uh, this spiritual, they're learning trust, vulnerability, openness, mm -hmm. um, and really on that, on their own spiritual gauntlet, whatever that looks and feels like to them. Yeah. So then we have the eight. Again, we go from that spiritual kind of um, different wavelength kind of person to the eight. And the eight is the material manifester. It is the power number. Even if we look at the eight, turn it upside down, it's the number of infinity, right? So it's about the constant flow of, of energy, which in this case, we can look at as money, uh, financial, you know, it, because it is if you know anything about numerology, it's like, ooh, eight is the money number, you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And yet I would say it's the power number even yes. before it's the money number, because it's if you don't empower yourself, you will be knocked out. You know, you will just be knocked off the, I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Just knocked off and, and you won't be able to get up <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. It is money, power, control, authority. It's all of those manifestation ener energies. It's like how to make it and make your mark in this big, bad world that we find ourselves in. So it's more so, of a physical, it's more of a physical manifestation of the energy. Exactly. And yet I would also say the highest octave of the eight is a very spiritual one. Mm -hmm. And even if we look at the eight, it is the number also of the divine feminine. Yeah. Even, th even though we often think about the eight as being a very masculine, very, uh, you know, ambitious, dominating energy mm -hmm. uh, in its highest formulation, it is that flow, right? And it is all of that. It is manifestation at its finest. And yet the characteristics here are, uh, are very dominating, very, you know, controlling energy, sometimes intimidating, very business oriented in terms of things, things for the eight are usually, uh, you know, whether, <laughs> whether we define it that way or not pretty transactional, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, even even personal relationships, it's about respect, it's about the authority, it's a route, it's about doing well in the world financially, and ultimately, hopefully to give back. It's also about uh, the, the eights, if you're an eight out there, you have got to really work on your integrity and your ethics. And that's a tough one sometimes because eights are usually in the business realm. The eight is the real estate number. The eight is this business, the CEO. It's all very, it's all business really. Um, mm -hmm. And you can use that though in a different way because there'll be some eights out there going, wait a minute, I'm, that's not what I'm doing. You, we would have to know your other numbers and see how it works together. And yet mm -hmm. ultimately at the end of the day, you're meant to empower yourself, do well in the world and, and give back there. So again, the flip side here is 
uh, very, very bullying, controlling, very workaholic, money focused, you know, to the maximum. Uh, there can be addictions there as well uh, that go with that sort of world of power. And then there's the other side of that scarcity, victimization, not being able, you know, being knocked down so much that you that you you use that as an excuse, you know, I never get a break, no one's ever done this for me. I've never, I've never, I've never, right. And the eight is step up or get stepped on. It's just, it's pretty, it's pretty boot camp, you know, pretty much boot camp for the, for an eight. Would you say that a lot of people in sort of power positions have some like prominent eight in their charts? They, you, they often do. Mm -hmm. And yet what's really interesting is sometimes, uh, again, the, 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 the opposition plays because let me put it this way. Eight, while the eight is the money number, an empowerment number in numerology, remember what we started out with, because you're meant to be doing it, it'll be the hardest thing for you to do. Mm. So oftentimes, I find people who are super successful and do re really well financially don't have eights in their chart, because it's like, like the Warren Buffett's and the everything else right, is a six, right. he's a visionary. And so when he's doing that money just flows, because it's not his primary focus. Mm. Overall, I mean, I mean, I don't know Warren Buffett. I'm just using him as an example. And, and we could, <laughs> right. we could thin slice that and argue about that statement, but, right. Right. but I'm, I'm using it as an example because, or you get, you know, other people, uh, who you've got, you know, Steve jobs, he was a one you've got other, other people who are in positions of, of power. You've got Mark Zuckerberg, he's a five. So I don't know that they, I can't remember if they have eights in their chart, but my, my point that I'm coming around to is that often eights have a real love hate relationship with money. Mm. And it is more of a point of struggle because money is a really key feature and a key theme. Right. And so sometimes when it's an over focus on that, it's, it's more of an issue. Uh, and then sometimes people who that's just kind of a, uh, you know, something that happens because they're following their heart, because they're doing what their creativity is bringing them all of those things. And it just flows a little bit easier Absolutely. because the aid is about money. It can be a little bit more problematic, right? It can almost become their block. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yet there's always that underlying intensity around, uh, around it. I always will say also I'll end the eight saying that the, the eight in its ultimate finest shining, you know, alignment is that, that really beautifully powerful, engaging, uh, successful person who, uh, has nothing, nothing to prove. <laughs> right, right. Because, right, right? because right. eights often have this intensity around them. They're, they're like, I have this belligerence about this force about proving something. A little know? bit of the ego, maybe the ego can come in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, because they're having to learn how to play with the big boys and girls, you know, mm -hmm. they are playing the bigger game, usually, mm -hmm. um, in that way. So then we we finish up with the nine. And the nine is the bookend of the one, right? The one is more about developing your ego properly and all about independence and self. And the nine is all about others. The nine is, as a life path is the compassionate humanitarian, um, uh, really here to cultivate and, and accumulate and disperse all of that past life wisdom that they have. They are the old souls, really, if we if we look at them in that way. And um, can you also look numerically in terms of like past life? So if you're looking like one to nine, would one maybe indicate a newer incarnation? You know, it's interesting because I, I, I hesitate to offer an opinion on that because mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. Um, fair, fair. I, th I think that certainly when there are nines and when there are master numbers, that does indicate an older soul who is, you know, and yet I don't think it, I truly don't believe that it goes, it's a linear thing. Like you start with the one and you do the two and then you, you know, all of those sorts of things. So I honestly don't have an answer to that question. But what I will say is that I do feel like we can look 
at some of the karmic implications mm -hmm. of our chart and say, like, for instance, if you have a five life path, I would say last, last, you know, the last time around, you probably had a lot of uh, instances where you had either abused uh, your levels of freedom or, or felt very restricted and confined. Mm -hmm. And you know, those sorts of things. So now you're coming in to work it uh, maybe differently. That's a, you know, I don't know if that's a good example, but that's just one example that off the top of my head. So, um, so maybe it can yeah. kind of pick up sort of like patterns from past lives or some energies needing to be worked through. Exactly, exactly. Okay. And then of course, this is not to be confused with, and we won't go into this, but I just for clarity, for those listening who might know a little bit more about this, there are four numbers in numerology that do that are called karmic debt numbers. And so they do indicate a specific karmic debt uh, that is being paid back. And what I also want to say about that is I love the karmic debt numbers because <laughs> I'm serious because we all have karma. And the beauty of this is that it really points out what you're balancing. And, and it really uh, is a karmic gift for you. It's an opportunity to see, oh, this is what I'm balancing. And, and this is how I can and balance it. And the karmic uh, debt number gives you that information. So it's pretty cool. Wow. That's really I like cool. it. Yeah. So so to finish up, though, with that with that nine, the nine is um, the number of completion. So when you're a nine, it took me longer in my numerology practice, uh, to kind of understand the nine. Mm. Because nines, I find are very enigmatic they're very quirky they're wonderful weirdos and i mean that with the most love uh humanly possible and so overarchingly they are the they it is the number of limited rewards mm -hmm. and i don't really love that way of saying it but what i will do is say it's limited rewards but the way that you think about that or the way i think about it is that the nine is learning to do that. It's to the nine's benefit to do what they're doing because they can't not do it mm -hmm. because whatever it is, they focus on, it is their passion. They're following their heart. And usually it's about giving something back to the state of the world, do being of service, giving something again of humanitarian value. Now that doesn't mean you have to have a nonprofit, whatever it means that you're just, you're a kind person, right? <laughs> right I mean, right. seriously, or, or something of that nature. So it can go, it can go all over the place, but uh, learning, learning about that, learning how to, how to receive as well as give, Mm -hmm. and uh, learning how to really activate the multi-levels and multi-gifts that the, the nine has. And I will say that uh, to use a few examples of how to even see this energy, it's so creative and so charismatic. Mm -hmm. um, and if we look at a few nine life paths, put them in a blender and see what that energy is. We've got Mother Teresa, we've got Gandhi, we have Greta Thunberg. Mm -hmm right? So spiritual, uh, they have a lot of spiritual energy channeling through them as well, too. Absolutely. They can, right? So you've got those high spiritual uh, folks that uh, in that we, we know and love. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the creatives, you've got Prince, Elvis Presley, Adele, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, um, you've got Whitney Houston, uh, David Byrne of the Talking Heads, Anthony Hopkins, Jim Carrey, uh, Robin Williams. These people are vortexes. They are tsunamis <laughs> of energy, aren't they? Yes. I mean, yes. think about it. It's an intensity. Yeah. They and, and it's like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know if I want to live with them, but I got to <laughs> tell you, I want what they've got. I mean, yeah. literally, they've got so much intrigue and they, again, multi levels of, of talent. I mean, Prince, how many instruments did he play? Something like 50 or something. I don't know. I mean, literally, he played every instrument every on his time. albums. He did all of the, you know, songwriting. He did all of the pr production 
and he did, and God only knows what else he was doing. You know, um, you've got Jim Carrey, who it was a stand-up, who he did comedy, then he did movies, he did TV, he did serious stuff. He he's a cartoonist, he's a painter. He all of these very very gifted people, and they're good at all of it. Right, <laughs> right? so good at all of it. <laughs> yeah, they're really good at all of it. So again, what could possibly go wrong? Um, they're, they're, they have the, the opposing quality. They can be really controlling, really belligerent. And if you look at some of these people, even the spiritual people, they weren't necessarily known for being nicey nice. Right. They were very driven and very passionate about what they were doing. Right. So there's like an ambition with the nine as well that we would see in the eight, but it's like kind of going into more maybe creative channels with the nine. Exactly. And always with a, what I find with nines is that they care so deeply about humanity. Right. And yet they're always kind of upset with humanity because of what humanity is. So it's almost like they want you to leave the world a better place and to serve humanity, but it, it's almost like they kind of really don't like people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Right, I mean, right. Because right. they're always disappointing, because they're always that. So there are many, many elements and aspects to the nine, but at the end of the day, they are um, they are here to be these force fields um, of and and the helpers and healers of the world, really. Right. And so if it's that completion of a cycle too, it would kind of intuit that the nine is here to really complete all their sort of karma as well and kind of like really live up to their potential in this lifetime, right? Exactly. Exactly. And they do in many schools of thought and numerology, the nine actually contains is a very sacred number. Divine. And it actually, yeah, well, and it contains um, all of the potentials and all the challenges of all of the numbers. So in, in many ways, it's like a, a past life grab bag, you know, <laughs> right? I right. mean, it, it really <laughs> is. It's like nines are like, okay, I'm going to grab in here and just, you know, cause I could do anything. Um, so what am I going to focus on this time? And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, um, it's really interesting. So anyway, but, but so much energy with the nine. Yeah. So much energy that needs to be kind of channeled, right? Where is it going to go? Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. And so I do want to go to, can we go briefly into Felicia, the numerology of 2023? Just a little bit. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Yes. Just briefly we'll do. Yes. Uh, so 2023 in numerology, we have personal year cycles, which, um, which is a very easy thing to, to, uh, to calculate. You just use your month of birth, your day of birth, and then add it with the current year and then reduce it just like we did with the life path. Mm -hmm. And we won't talk about that today, uh, but I wanted to just acknowledge that those are the more um, immediate personal uh, energy uh, that we're being supported with uh, during a given year. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, uh, is the universal year. And so the universal year for 2023, we again, simple, simple addition, we take two mm -hmm. plus zero plus two plus three, and that equals seven. Mm -hmm. So think about think about when I was talking about the seven life path, yeah. we can always begin to plug in the basic components, the basic defining qualities of each of the numbers whenever they show up. Mm -hmm. So if the seven shows up as a universal year, basically the universal year number gives us an, an idea of what all of us globally, universally, everyone on the planet is immersed in this energy. And so for all of us, what I really like to look at is what's going on politically, what's going on in the environment, what's going on, you know, uh, I mean, are there wars that are happening? What is going on with, you know, climate disasters? What are, I mean, all of the other things, I don't even want to frame it that way, but you know what I mean? It's what's going on with everything and how are we responding? politically and as as a whole as a as a global collective as a uh, global community mm -hmm. so those are the things that really are focused on when we're thinking about the universal year so in in with that said the seven is a, a kind of pausing year mm -hmm. it's a year where we're all collectively globally being asked 
ask to to dig deep, mm -hmm. to kind of really um, reveal some of our collective shadows, mm -hmm. to bring them up for conversation, mm -hmm. to acknowledge them. Mm -hmm. It's a time where we're being asked to evolve spiritually, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that might mean at any given time for, for all of us and for any of us. Mm -hmm. It's a time for research. It's a time for, you know, um, organizing, researching. So I see that collectively, it's more of a year where they're going to where there's going to be a lot of things that are being researched right now that are being developed, that are being tweaked, that are being tested. And then 2024 is going to be where some of those things are launched, ramped up, brought into the world. But right now, it's mostly uh, about about you know getting it getting it done in that way. It's and turning, over, so turning inward a little bit. Absolutely, it's a okay. very introspective time, a lower energy time, and a time for rest and reflection mm -hmm. um, in a in a very real way. And it's more about whatever you think mm. will manifest. Ooh. So would you say <laughs> it, for people out there, be careful with your thoughts this year, be very intentional. Be very intentional. And I would say, that, you know, we all need to do that all the time. Absolutely. And yet for a seven universal year, it is a very, very good thing to remind ourselves of um, every single day. I mean, it would be a really interesting practice, wouldn't it, to uh, to have that as a part of our getting up in the morning, you know, have it on, on a sticky note on our mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. it careful is. Careful of your thoughts takes. today. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Be careful what you think and what you wish for, because that really does create your reality and it creates, uh, it creates um, it, it creates your reality and what comes to you. And I love Dr. Juno Jordan is a, a numerologist who's now deceased, but I love her and I love to, you know, uh, quote her and give her credit for that quote. But she will say that the seven cycle is a time where we're all asked to develop the right state of mind. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Sounds easy, but it, it's a little bit like a Yoda, you know, a Yoda yeah, thing. Yeah. You know, you get yeah, to yeah. really, you get to really chew on that. So that's the basis uh, of the seven, the seven universal year. Beautiful, beautiful. And just kind of a last thing for people out there. What would you say for them if they're looking into numerology, maybe they want to get a session for you with you? What would you say would be kind of the best place for them to start getting you know, their life path read? What do you kind of do for people in sessions? Well, absolutely. Just, uh, I would say go to my website, that is feliciabender.com. And I've got uh, some really, I think some really nice ways to just begin to understand numerology, uh, a, a lot about the life path, I write a monthly forecast that you can access for free, that's on YouTube as well. And then you can do a session. I also teach some courses, certification courses, entrepreneurs, uh, that sort of thing. But a private session is a really great way to really cut to the chase, right? Yeah. And get yeah, yeah, and yeah. get down to it's like, all right, this is all well and good. But I want to know about me, right? Yeah. I want to know about Absolutely. how I want to use this. And that Absolutely. that would be the best, the best, uh, the best opportunity for that. Yeah. Awesome. And I so recommend it because honestly, your work is amazing. It's so grounded. It's so practical. I think with these sort of more woo practices, we have to bring it into the physical plane as well. So thank mm -hmm. you so, so much, Felicia, for coming on. I seriously so appreciate it. You have amazing energy and brought so much insight today. And thank you for being here with us. Well, thank you. And thank you for doing what you do. It's really, really valuable for all of us. So thank you. Thank you. I so appreciate it. And we'll be back with a new episode soon as well, guys. Bye.